Hello everyone and welcome back. So far we have seen the formal grammar and its classifications. During the last session I reminded you all that during the course of syntax analysis we will be observing the type 2 or context free grammars very closely. So in this session we will be observing various derivation procedures of the context free grammars or CFGs. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first, we will acquire the understanding of the left and the rightmost derivations, and thereafter we will observe the derivations using parse tree. Now we already know that a syntax analyzer or parser keeps different types of context-free grammars in its disposal, with the help of which after receiving the stream of tokens from the lexical analysis phase, the parser produces the parse tree. Now, these context free grammars need to be of certain form to be processed by the parser. We will get to that later. Today, we will mainly observe the different ways based on which a particular string of terminals can be derived from a context free grammar. Consider this grammar E can be rewritten as E plus E or E into E or ID or identifier. Although it's written in this fashion, there are three rules. The first one, E can be rewritten as E plus E. The second one is, E can be rewritten as E into E. And the third one, E can be rewritten as ID. Now we already know that a grammar is defined by four tuples, right? And those four tuples are N, T, P and S. Where n is the set of non terminals, t is the set of terminal symbols, p is the set of production rules, and s is the start symbol, which happens to be a non terminal. Now, for this particular grammar, the set n contains only e. As you can observe, e is the only non terminal here. Now, t is the set containing the addition operator, the multiplication operator, and id. Now, P, that is the production rule, specifies all these three rules. And here, the start symbol is E itself. So, this is a grammar. Now, we have claimed that this is a context free grammar. Let's see whether that's correct. In the previous session, we learned that context free or type 2 grammar is of the form A can be written as alpha, where A belongs to N and alpha belongs to V star which basically is any combination of non-terminals and terminals, including epsilon. Basically, the left-hand side of every production must have only one non-terminal. Well, in the LHS of all these three rules, we have only a single non-terminal, that is E. Coming to the right-hand side, the production rules are allowed to have alpha, that is any combination of non-terminals and terminals, which is exactly the case in here as well. So now, we are certain that this here is a context free grammar. Suppose from this, we want to derive the string id plus id into id. Now, there are mainly three types of derivation processes. The first one that we are about to learn is leftmost derivation. So, what happens in here, whenever the derivation is supposed to take place, we will expand the leftmost non terminal. Let me illustrate. Remember, we are to derive this string. Now, since the start symbol is E only, let's choose the first rule. So, we state E derives E plus E. Now, since it's leftmost derivation, we will have to choose the leftmost non-terminal, that is this E for expansion. Now, the final string should be ID plus ID into ID. Therefore, for this expansion, let's choose the rule number 3, that is E can be written as ID. So far, we have covered id and plus. Now again for expansion, we will choose the leftmost variable. Observe, in this sentential form, the only variable is this e. Now we want to expand this e in such a way that we can achieve this string. So which production rule should we choose? Yes, the second one. That is, e can be written as e into e. So let's do that. Now, in this sentential form, there are two variables and amongst them, this is the leftmost one. Now, since we already have achieved the format of the string, let's choose the third rule, that is, E can be written as ID. Now, this is the only E left. 
we will again choose the same rule for its expansion. So we derive ID. So starting from the start symbol E, using these production rules, we finally derived the intended string that is ID plus ID into ID. And during this entire derivation process, we kept on expanding the leftmost non terminal. Therefore, this procedure is called leftmost derivation. Let's now observe the next one, that is, the rightmost derivation. So, from the name, you already have guessed it. Yes, here for expansion, we will choose the rightmost non terminal every single time. Let's see whether we can achieve this string using rightmost derivation or not. We will begin with the same rule, that is, E can be written as E plus E. Therefore, E derives E plus E. Now, among these two E's, this is the rightmost non terminal, isn't it? Now, in order to expand it, which rule should we choose? Observe, the string that we are supposed to achieve is id plus id into id. And we have already achieved plus and we are yet to acquire into. So, let's choose the second rule. So, e can be written as e into e. Now, our derived sentential form has three e's, that is, three non terminals. And we already have achieved the format. Now, this one is the rightmost non terminal. Using the third rule, we will derive id from this one. Now, among these two, this one is the rightmost one. Again, using the third production rule, we will derive id from this one. Now, we have only one variable. So, from this one, if we again derive id, we finally achieve the intended string. So, yes, using rightmost derivation also, we derive the string id plus id into id. Here, our only concern was to expand the rightmost variable during derivation. So, these were the two ways. Now, the next and most popular way is the parse tree derivation. Here, we will manually build the parse tree, and if our derivation is correct, then during the top to bottom, left to right traversal of the tree, we will end up acquiring the string of terminal. So, let's begin with the start symbol E. Let's choose the first rule. E can be written as E plus E. So, from this E, we will derive E, then the addition symbol and then E. Now, from this E, using the second rule, we will derive E into E. Finally, from all the three E's, we will derive ID using the third rule. Now, let's traverse the tree. C, ID plus ID into ID. So, yes, we have derived intended string using the parse tree derivation method. Do remember, this is the most popular and time effective derivation procedure. So, in this session, we acquired the understanding of left and rightmost derivations, also the derivation procedure using parse tree. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the different derivation methods are now clear to you. In the next session, we will learn about the ambiguity in context-free grammars. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.